In this lesson, we're going to learn how to add a new axis to an array using some new syntax. Then we're also going to start learning about how we can index and slice NumPy arrays. Let's start off by learning about two useful ways to increase the dimensions of an existing array. The first is done by creating a new axis using the new axis constant. Here we're going to create an array which is one dimensional and that's going to equal a range until three. And the very first thing we're going to do is check what shape it has. So when we run this, it should give us a shape of three. This shape tells us that it has only one dimension. Next, let's try to add a new axis along the first dimension. And to do this, we're going to overwrite the original array and we're going to type in array square brackets np new axis and colon. Then right below that, I'm going to print the array and the array shape. So we have all of this information. And when we run this, what we should get back is an array with a new axis. As you can see, instead of just three, we now have one and three as the shape. If you want to add a new axis along the second dimension, you just reverse this. So you add colon, comma, np dot new axis. And when we run this, we will get this as an output. And we will again have two dimensions. But we also have another method, which I find much easier to read called expand dimensions. And here we're going to type in expanded equals np expand dimensions. And what we have to do here is pass in the array that we want to expand and along which axis we want to expand it. So here we can add an axis along the first dimension. And when we print this, what we should end up with is pretty much what we had earlier, but using this new syntax. Otherwise, if you change the axis to one, it's going to add an axis along the second dimension. Up next, it's time we cover how indexing and slicing work in NumPy. First of all, you should know that slicing and indexing can be done the exact same way as you do it in Python. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to change the range to 10. Then I'm going to print the range at the index of zero, the range at the index of minus one, the range at the index of three to five, where that's actually a slice. Then we can also step two by using this syntax over here and so on. When you run this, you're going to notice that it works exactly the same way as it would in Python. And I'm not going to cover all the ways you can index and slice lists in Python because this is a NumPy tutorial. So we're going to immediately move on to what makes slicing and indexing unique in NumPy. Now let's delete all of this and replace it with this matrix. One cool feature we have in NumPy is being able to specify a condition for the values we want to get back. For example, we can print the array at the index of only the even numbers. So here we need to write a formula that grabs the even numbers. And we can do that by specifying the array modulus operator two equals zero. We wrote the condition for the elements that we want to get back. And when we run this, we should end up with all the even numbers. Otherwise, if we duplicate this, we can also check for all the values that are less than three. And if we run that, we will get zero, one, and two. So it grabbed these values. Or we can also check for all the values that are greater than 10. So we can add greater than and 10. And we should end up with 30 and 40. So it's quite cool that you can specify conditions for the elements you want to get back. And we can even specify multiple conditions. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to change this back to a range with 20 elements. And we're going to print the array at the index of array where every element is greater than 10. And note that I'm doing this in parentheses because we're using the logical and operator here so that we can combine conditions. And where the array or the elements in the array, modulus operator two are equal to zero. Just like that, we were able to combine multiple conditions for the elements we wanted to get back. So now when we run this, we will get 12, 14, 16, and 18 because all the elements here are greater than 10 and are divisible by two. Or in other words, those are even numbers. And this also works with the pipeline or the logical OR operator. So here we're checking that the array modulus operator two is equal to zero for even numbers or that the array is equal to 15, not the array, but the element. And now when we run this, we're going to get zero, two, four, six, eight, and so on, all the even numbers plus 15, because these were the conditions we specified. And only one of these had to be true for it to return its value. 
And I'm just going to copy this right here because you can also use logical operators to return booleans based on the conditions. So let's remove this. And what I'm going to do here is type in conditional and we're just going to paste in this condition. And now when we print this variable, what you'll notice is that we're going to get back an array of booleans where this condition was met and where it was not met. So instead of getting the actual value back, we're getting the Boolean back on whether it met the condition. If you want to retrieve the indices of the values that meet your condition, you can use the non-zero method. So here, what we're going to do is create a matrix, which will equal NP array, and we'll pass in two, three, three, and four, four, six. Right now, when we print this matrix, it's going to look like this. Now to get back the indices of the condition we specify, we can type in print np non-zero and inside here we'll add the matrix modulus operator two is equal to zero. So we're checking for all the elements that are even. Now when we run this, what you should notice is that we will get back two arrays. One that's going to specify the row and one that's going to specify the column. And what it's saying here is that on the first row at the index of zero, we have an element that meets the condition two. Then on the second row, right over here, we have an element at the index of zero that also meets this condition. And that's true for one and two. As you can see over here, everything refers to the second row. If we were to check for odd numbers, we're going to get a different result here since we only have two odd numbers. As you can see this time, each array only contains two elements or two indices. So once again, on the first row, which is this one over here, at the index of one, we have an odd number, which is number three. And we also have the same thing over here, which is at the index of two, still on the first row. But what happens if you have no elements that match? So matrix where the element is equal to 100. Well, if the condition is not met by any of the elements, you're going to get this as an output, an empty array and the type that it contains. 